Hi, I received something in the mail, a replacement, it's, a, it's another case for a CD32, and it has another drive mechanism in it, with some, with some spoo, apparently. <clears throat> Looks like it's going to stay put, so I'm going to try this one on our motherboard and see what happens. All right. Um, If I can set it here, I mean it is the top half of the case. You think that? Mm. <clears throat> I'm kind of nervous about that, so just gonna prop it up. <clears throat> There's part of the uh, drive mechanism that has some contacts on it that are that could touch the motherboard, and then there's this part right here. <clears throat> Uh, underneath, you know, this switch, this panel here, there's a circuit board under there, and you don't want that to touch either, and it isn't. Okay, so let's try it. Okay. <clears throat> See, this one didn't keep spinning, so... Ooh. <clears throat> so we have it trying to spin, but not being super successful. Is I wonder is this thing spring loaded? It's almost like you know what I remember. Actually, a lot of people complained about it, but the angry video game nerd on YouTube actually did a review of this, and he had to put something on top of it to hold it down. Sure enough, it stopped. But I think that's the problem. Yeah, so <clears throat> if you push this down and then you let it up and it stops. So what's happening is it's sliding. It's sliding on the disc and not gripping, which <clears throat> is a mechanical problem. And I mean, this is just held, held on with a magnet, really. It floats. It's a floating mechanism, it just floats there. Um, instead of the uh, CD32, which, I mean, it should load. Got some weird scratches on it, but we're not we're not in the middle of the disc, so just want to see if we can get past a certain point here. We might just have a bad laser. See, that's interesting. Look at that. It's got quite a bit of wobble to it, also. Let's see if I can push in the center without slowing it down. Um, 
What in the world? This is fears. Maybe that's a normal screen. frozen but you know what we're further along than we were and it's probably just a matter of this magnet not being strong enough anymore and it's hard for me to put a neodymium on here because it's going to unbalance it you know stronger it does I think it does let's just try it like this without pushing down on it or anything it is going to slip and slide I know that magnet hack worked. Nothing wrong with this laser. Cool soundtrack. Okay, so after doing a lot of research and trying to figure things out and getting some ideas, I figured out the problem, but um, I think I did. I did some research and people, you know, on, I did Google searches on, on the disc not spinning or spinning when you have to hold the lid down. And basically when you're holding the lid down, there could be two problems. It could be the fact that the lid is like not closing all the way. It's kind of popped up or whatever. And this this piece here, which is on the underside uh, of the lid, is just not, you know, actually touching the disc, which it needs to. It needs to touch the disc. Now this outside silver piece here is attached to the lid. It's, you know, with three screws. The part inside here <clears throat> is just floating. I put this tape up here to hold it in place, but it floats in there. There's no spring, you know, it just floats. If I go like this, it, cl it clicks like this. If I go like this, it clicks, you know, gravity takes takes over. So this, just with gravity, uh, it, it touches the disc, but also there's a magnet. There's a, there's a circular magnet uh, behind this plastic, and it it is attracted to the silver uh, lip here, and it sticks on there, you know, it kind of sticks on there. So. Having explained that, if this doesn't close down all the way, it doesn't clamp the disc. This actually, there's a center hole here and the center pin from the drive goes into that hole, right? So this hole here in the center of the, of the let's call this the top platter or the top spindle. So this that little pin goes into here. Now, if for some reason, and this is where I found like people needed, in order to get their drive to work, they needed to raise up this spindle part. And they didn't seem to know why or say why or whatever, but really what it is is you're trying to get that pin 
to come down because I'll just compare this drive. This isn't a functional drive, but it doesn't spin the disc, and I think it might be the laser is just like dead. But um, this one, when I measure the two against each other, I'm not close enough to focus on that. <clears throat> just on a visual me measurement, and, and the best place to check it out is here. When we look at the pin and how far it comes up, does it, does it come up too far? So, if, you know, you need to have it flush, you need to have it flush. If you don't have that, that spindle pin, the motor shaft, it's actually the end of the motor shaft. If you don't have that motor shaft flush on there, then what happens is this is raised up. I mean, there is supposed to be a little bit of a gap there, but this is too much of a gap. So now, what we have a challenge for, and what I, I did when I did the research and found out people wanted to move this spindle uh, up, they had problems with it because this thing is really on there. So um, I've got quite a lot of tools and the ability to make more. So let me um, try to figure some, I guess most people are just trying to push something in here and wedge it up and in one case of a youtuber he actually bent the, the motor shaft so that's not going to work it really we really need to work out a technique because you know motor replacement probably isn't unheard of and may be required in some cases so i'm going to figure out a way and i'll let you know okay so my first attempt getting a screwdriver underneath the spindle and using two screwdrivers, using one like this uh, to wedge against so that I wasn't, I'm not going to put pressure, all the pressure on this plastic ring because it's probably not going to last. It's not going to be able to withstand that. All right, so put one screwdriver like this, another screwdriver on top of it. I have another one, but I'll use this file <clears throat> like this and attempted to wedge it up. And all I succeeded in doing was chew a little chunk off the corner of the shaft. It doesn't look horrible. I mean, it doesn't look like I removed too much material. That problem is, is this thing speeds at, I don't know, what is it, 2x, 300? Or I don't know what 2x is, but it speed it can go pretty fast, and I don't want to unbalance it too much by removing material off of one side. So anyway, um, that didn't work. It was just doing destruction. So I figured, okay, time to make a tool. So I figured the closest tool I have ready to go is the flathead screwdriver. So um, I took a junker one. You know, you can get these for a dollar. You can get you know screwdrivers for a dollar. And so I ground it flat on a grinder and then cut a slot in it with, you know, a cutoff wheel. And then I finished it off with a file. Um, I got it close to the right thickness. I mean, if I, if I go too thin, the thing will bend, depending on how tight the shaft is. But I think the problem is, is that the shaft is, it, it just has a, a huge contact point. It, it, it's it's contact with the with the, the shaft of the spindle here connects with the sh the motor shaft and, and it's like three quarters of an inch long or something like that so um that's quite quite a long con that's kind of why it sticks it's not glued on there you know so anyway i've pushed it up too far really which is going to happen obviously and so the next thing i want to do is i want to get it flush so Okay, so I decided I didn't like the idea of tapping it. Just, I'm afraid of doing damage to the motor <clears throat> or even the circuit board behind it. So here I have it in a vise. This is a cheap vise, but everybody's got a vise, right? So I've got 
I've got the back of it um, protected with a washer so that I wasn't pushing against because <clears throat> you're not going to get this in here uh, without uh, damaging the, um, the solder joints so you know the pins coming through from the motor so you can see a pin here and then I have like a, an old washer uh, protecting you know that's around the other pin so that that secures that side and then what I have is I have a couple large washers that are just about the right size um, you could use a socket um, <clears throat> this vise I have is kind of a cheap small vise uh, so I can't open it far enough to get a socket in here and so when you tighten the vise oops, what, you do, what happens is, is it clicks, it goes punk, it goes pink, and it goes in like a few millimeters. And then you do it again, and it goes pink. So I'll give you a demonstration of that. So I've got it tight now. I'm almost there. Hopefully I don't go too far, but it only is going a few millimeters at a time each time I do this. So I'm carefully doing this. There, see? And then, it only goes a few millimeters, which is fortunate. So each time when I'm done, I just go and look back to see if we're doing well on our spindle depth. And that is really freaking close. We have a danger of bringing this up you know, not pushing this down far enough and then the laser not working because the disc isn't close enough to the laser. But that is so close. I think that's right on the money, actually. So we're gonna give this a try with our game and see if it'll read discs better. Okay, we're all back together. Hopefully we're just, we haven't created another problem by making it too far away. Everything seems okay. Turn it on. No sliding. Absolutely no sliding. We have found the source of our problem, of many problems. It's not gonna focus. I've got the adapter on the lens, but that loaded as f fast as it ever has. Now the real test is, so that's the OEM first party game. You know, factory printed disc, so that's going to work. Easy, easiest. Let's try couple of our other discs which may may not may or may not work I don't know but these are definitely CDRs because they're like public domain type things so no sliding around <clears throat> I would say we have a good result this disc does indeed load workbench it brought up this portion of the screen fairly quickly, but now I guess it's loading a bunch of other things, I don't know. So now it's, yeah, it's got a bunch of programs it's loading. Okay, finally. <clears throat> okay. One thing I thought that was very unusual about the CD32 that nobody has pointed out is, is that this is a wall hanging unit. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to hang a CD32 on the wall, but obviously it's been machined the plastic so that you could hang it on the wall. I guess maybe like a kiosk or a demo thing or something. Mounted inside a cabinet. 
video game machine, you know, like a stand-up arcade machine. It's just odd. It's very odd. Controller seems to work fine. Um, this is the bad drive unit. Although I don't, not sure why there would be Velcro on the back of it. Stick it somewhere, I guess. So we have one completely functional CD32 unit that we'll be sending back to our friend Brad. And I'm going to clean these off. And he's letting me keep the parts, but you know, maybe someday I can put together. A CD32 of my own. Anyway, thank you for watching and uh, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.